So, Connie, yes. what is your favorite summer wine to drink? I'm not a real white wine drinker, so when I drink wine, I usually drink a red called Menage a Trois. Menage a Trois? It's very mm. inexpensive, and it's easy, and you can find it everywhere. How about you? Well, I don't know. I'm still learning. You're, you're easy at whatever you want. Right, pretty yeah. much. Well, maybe yeah. white Zinfandel or a little Shiraz. But... Just unless it's, if only if it's only two, over 200, right? <laughs> oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> well, you know, wine is such a social staple, and, you know, you don't have to be rich or you don't have to be a wine expert to drink it. That's true. Just enjoy it. Don't be stressed about anything when you're drinking wine, but just enjoying the glass. And even what you pair with the, your uh, wine, as far as food goes, and even the season really doesn't matter. But we're going to talk a little bit with Paul Mincer, who is from Oakville Grove. Grocery Company. Uh, they've got a location right now down at Jefferson and Central in uh, Cityscape. Cityscape yes. It's booming down there, isn't it? Oh, fantastic. Nice <laughs> to see you. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. So, um, well, let's talk a little bit about the pairings. You know, when you're talking about the seasons, can you can you just about have red in any season, or is it red? Uh, I really believe you drink what you like. Yeah. Okay. But, I like that. <laughs> but as summary, I tend to go a little lighter style, so things that are not intensely flavored, yeah. uh, maybe a little more acidic and thirst quenching. Not so many caps, then. Correct, yeah. <laughs> We're going to the lighter ones, but we're going to read it about Okay. Well, you brought a couple wines to show us that are um, relatively inexpensive. So this one is one of your first picks. Uh, I wanted to pair some things that were nice and easy drinking with specific foods. So cheeses, for instance, it's mm -hmm. easy to have a little snack. You want something that has a little creaminess that pairs with the cheese, but it's got some real refreshing acidity, so it will cut the dairy kind of product. So it's yeah. just very refreshing style to drink. Okay. okay. And this is your Estrada Creek? Estrada Creek, yeah. Okay. And that's actually fairly inexpensive. Expensive too, isn't it? Yeah, it's only ten ninety nine. Yeah, Ooh, so that's like beautiful. That. And you can actually, I can smell it from here. I can really yeah. smell the, the bouquet mm. of that is really fresh and bright. Has a kind of a buttery kind of character. Yeah. Really works well with dairy. With dairy, yeah. okay. Yeah. Beautiful. I like that. Okay. I and like then that. as we come down a little bit, you've had a little bit of color here. We've got a, a rose. Oh, uh, it's a dry rosé. It's actually a rosé of Sangiovese out of Washington, which I fell in love with. We have it at our wine bar, and I got it on a whim because I really like Sangiovese. It's really bright, mm. acidic, strawberry flavors. goes perfect with our cranberry turkey yes. sub that we have at the store. Uh, it's just really mm. fantastic wine. That's wow. really nice summer what, wine. Uh, well, educate me here. A rosé. What makes a rosé? I mean, what? why do they call it? It's like kind of a new trend, it seems They like. leave it on the skins of the red grapes okay. just long enough to get a little color. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then they throw away the skins. With white wines, they don't use the skins at all. Mm -hmm. So they chuck those before they even start. So is this, is it as sweet or... It, is it that all than depends what the winemaker okay. wants to do. They tend to have a little fruitiness and a little more acidity to them. Okay. You don't really want the skins very long, or it gets that bitterness that you get in all the cabs and the really heavy kind of wine. That is a good okay. question, though, because sometimes when you're, you know, obviously with the reds, you've got the lighter reds, and then you get into a really deep, heavy red. Yes. Mm -hmm. With the with the whites and the rosés, are you seeing a level there as well? Yeah, you you get some intensity in them, but mm -hmm. uh, you don't get tannins in them, and that's where you get the bitterness. So okay. you just want to avoid that, especially in the summertime. Okay. Good. And then you have a nice Pinot Noir. Now, I recommend Pinots in the summer because you can lightly chill them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, actually, I recommend lightly chilling Pinots because they're more refreshing. They're lighter styles. The heavier Pinots, like the Oregon ones, maybe not as cool, but I think they're really flexible wines, have them with grilled food, yeah. things like that. Okay. I actually get really tacky with that, and I add ice to it because it's light anyway, and it makes it really cold. And well, I, I just, I don't mind chilling them, but if you've added <laughs> ice, you've changed the wine. Yeah, you know, right. So I try not to <laughs> Trust me, I know. I've heard all about it from, from my wine friends. <laughs> okay, what so lightly chill this one. I like this yeah. Pinot Noir. I would never think to do a, drink a wine like this in the summertime. Yeah, so. yeah no, awesome. very easy. Okay, yeah. steak with this wine. You still want to cook out on the grill. We mm -hmm. wanted to have some other options. Uh, this is the Sterling Vineyards Collection Meritage. It's a Cabernet-based wine, but not as intense as some of the big Cabernets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing a grill, uh, especially a steak or sausages, you want really heavier characters, yeah. but not too intense. You could still pop this in the fridge for about five or ten minutes, bring okay. the temperature down just okay. a touch. So no wine ever should be above about 70 degrees. Okay. So it's still nice and refreshing. And then finally, we're doing dessert. Tell us a little bit about yes. that. Yes. Uh, I brought a bread pudding. I just had this this morning. Our baker yeah, makes this every it, day. But did you bring a fork, Paul? That's exactly uh, two forks, actually. We, <laughs> I've got three forks. How's that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> but I recommend a sparkling wine. Uh, the bread pudding is not overly sweet. You can have sparkling wines with virtually anything, but I think it pairs really well with desserts, cuts the little sweetness there. You can have a whole variety of different styles of sparkling wines and they work with anything. So. Well, now we know why, why Oakville Grocery calls you the wine guy. That's exactly he knows everything. Right. He knows everything. <laughs> and 
all wines under twelve dollars at yep. least right here i love yes. it so thank you paul for your time thank you very much thanks all right well if you'd like more information you can check out uh, our wines they're all on the website there that we just talked about at abc15.com click on the lifestyle tab